So I'm here in Orlando, Florida at Ciro World, an amazing event put together by Densply Serona, Cerec, Galileos, all sorts of things going on. And I'm here with Frank Brown. Frank, great Paul, to see you. Nice great to, to see you. As I understand, Frank, you've been in dentistry for a little bit of a time. <laughs> a little bit. I graduated in 1978. 78. Which is probably before most of the people that are attending this event have been born. You better believe it. <laughs> so one of the interesting things for you, and this is why I want to talk to you, is that you've been doing restorative dentistry, you've been doing implants, before there was any such thing as 3D imaging, intraoral scanning, 3D cone beams, so. Or computers. <laughs> well, actually computers, yeah, 1970, yeah, sure, 78. These were in the early 80s. So, um, as you were doing original implants, it was surgery, big time surgery. You were flapping, you were doing bone impressions. Give me, give me a sense of what was and then what happened all of a sudden to change your entire perspective in life, basically? The, uh, you know, when, when I started, we had subperiosteals and blades, and then the root forms came along, but still we were basing everything on uh, a panoramic x-ray, a two-dimensional x-ray. So you were guessing. So we were guessing. And you'd have to flap open the tissue so that you can now visualize both the lingual and, and the buckle, buckle of the bone. You know, with the bone. Sometimes you'd flap it open and find that <laughs> there wasn't a lot of bone there. The All of a sudden you had a, you had a, really you had a thick and paper thin there. ridge or something like that. Right. A little late to figure so that then out. You'd have to say, well, I'm sorry, so you back up again. <laughs> the, um, and, and still to this day, you're going to find a lot of people that haven't invested in technology are still doing it that same way. Um, and a lot of times it works. But then sometimes you open it up and it's like, well, there's a little bit more bone here, a little bit more bone there. So the implant gets placed where bone is. Now the restoring dentist has to deal with, you know, where that implant is. Exactly, and it's, and, and it's so much easier for planning if you can plan the case first and then figure out where the implant is going to fit beneath it as right. opposed to the other way. Because we all have the horror stories of putting a screw through the facial of a tooth or some ridiculous thing. There are websites all over the place. There's a couple of uh, Facebook sites that show these cases that you just scratch your head. And, yeah. and how do these happen? So, so give me a little bit about the CEREC and the uh, Galileos and how this whole thing works. Yeah, so what we have now is CEREC gives us the ability to scan intraorally and then to design crowns and mill them. In an edentulous plate, in an edentulous spot, what we can do is design the crown where we would want it to be. If it's a three and a bridge, design it exactly where we want the final restoration to be. We can take that image and import it into the Galileo's 3D cone beam scan. So you superimpose it, basically. So we superimpose it. So now when I have a 3D scan, so I can see everything in three dimensions, I can place that final restoration now on that 3D scan and then virtually place my implants exactly where they should be from a prosthetic standpoint, not only where the screw comes out, but where the tooth is. I can see how much bone I have, so either I need to use a different diameter implant, maybe wider, maybe smaller, or maybe do some grafting at the time of, of placement. Or but at least you, you're, you're at not going in there with your eyes closed. But I'm not going in with my eyes closed. Now, surgically though, for the patient, what does this do for the patient? You're, still not, you're not flapping now. Right, because now I can take that virtually placed implant, that implant plan, and I can either send it to SciCat, which will make a surgical guide for me, mm -hmm. or if it's a smaller, if it's like a one or two uh, implant case, I can now send it back to my, my CEREC and mill my own surgical guide. Oh, so you can make a limited surgical guy with the CEREC in the office itself. Correct. Wow. So, and of course, I mean, that's the type of thing a patient can come in at 9 o'clock in the morning, and I can have a fully guided case done by, by 1 o'clock. No sending it out to the lab, no, no in between. Wow. So we're talking about, this is, this is one visit dentistry on steroids, as, essentially. Steroid, exactly. And we, we're talking about one visit dentistry coming to have a crown. One visit dentistry have an implant, restoration. Now, in the process that you're using, there are some standards form implants and standard form abutments, but Serona has some other sort of little tricks too, don't they? With their tie base. All right, tell me about that a little the, bit. Um, one of the, and I'll go back back in history yeah, before sure. the tie bases, where we all we first had was stock abutments, mm -hmm. standard collar height, standard everything. Yeah, and you had to buy a 15 degree angled one if or whatever it was, it. whatever, yeah. Right. 
then it, we had Atlantis abutments where they would custom make abutments. Which cost a fortune, by the way. Cost a fortune. And still, <laughs> Nothing against Atlantis. <laughs> what Serona has come up with now is what's called a tie base. It's a, it, it's a small uh, abutment that's fixed your level, but the restoration, which is either Emacs or Zirconia, starts right at the fixture level. So I can design a full contour crown starting from, from the fixture level. Oh. Now, that gets cemented onto the tie base, and I can either make it a screw-retained crown, oh, you can. or I hit a split feature on the software, and it splits it between an abutment and a crown that now can be Like cemented a little jigsaw twice. puzzle together. So, so your emergence profile is much, much better in that situation. It's, yeah, my emergence profile is indistinguish can be indistinguishable from a natural too. I hate it when you have a little weeny little abutment sitting up there, and then this gigantic mushroom sitting up there. The pe no matter how good your contacts are, there's open spaces, there's open co contacts. It's a, food trap. it's a mess. That's great. Now, how, how do you accommodate though, like the healing cap, for example, in that case, or if you're doing the tie base? If I'm doing tie base, I will. What I generally do is. I will make the, the final crown with the emergence profile exactly the way I want it. Uh -huh. Now, as I put that crown in place, I'll modify the tissue. Oh, right at that point. I'll modify it at that point. It'll heal right into the. It'll heal right it into the heal restoration. Right to the final restoration. So you're saving. You, yeah. So you don't have to wait for the the, the so-called healing. Right. So instead of doing you know a healing abutment, now maybe you want to put a custom healing abutment in, let that heal. You're taking abutments on and off. And generally, some of the research shows that the less, the fewer times you take abutments on and off, the less bone loss you're going to have. Because there's always going to be some so, peri-implantitis no matter what happens. Huh. So I'm just putting it in once and letting it heal to that. But the nicest thing, that, the difference between this versus like an Atlantis abutment, per se, is a reason people would go with the custom healing abutments is because sometimes you're going to get a little tissue shrinkage. You don't know exactly where that tissue is going to end up and you don't want to see that metal abutment. So let it heal first, then make your abutment and you can drop it. But because the, the final restoration starts from the fixture and is the same material all the way up, if I get a little bit of recession, then I would not matter what. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just want to make a clarify one point. We're using this term Atlantis as a generic term, nothing against right. Atlantis. We're right. talking about CAD CAM, CAD -CAM made uh, uh, implant abutments. That's all. I just don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble with Atlantis because I like Atlantis. I use Atlantis quite a bit Atlantis myself. Atlantis abutments are, are outstanding abutments. <laughs> I mean, if you need a metal abutment, a custom abutment. Nothing like right. it. Nothing like it. They actually right. had some ceramics for a while too. And since they're owned by the same company now, I can tell that's you that's why. The choice between the two, I'm going to take the time. <laughs> well, that's, that's fine, but I think this is going to be interesting with, with Dense by Serona coming together, it's been now over 100 and 175 days, according to Jeff Sloven, that things are really gelling together and you're going to see more and more synergy between the companies, and I think that's going to be something helpful. It, it really has been a perfect marriage for Serona and Densply. The products that Densply has, the products that Serona makes, I mean, they just, they really do go hand in hand. So, any, in a nutshell, has this changed your life? Oh, I, <laughs> that would be an understatement. <laughs> um, every dentist goes through periods of, um, burnout. You do the same thing over and over and over again. This this CAD CAM and 3D imaging not only revitalized me and my practice, but because they continue to innovate, every time I turn around there's something new. Some people may complain because like, oh, it's costing me more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it keeps me in, invigorated and recharged. And, and you, you have no plans to you have no plans to leave. It was a time. Years is like, yeah, I don't want to like, retire. Why you know having too much great. fun? <laughs> I am. I'm having a great deal. I say the same thing to my patients. I have no reason to leave because I'm still having fun. When I get bored and when I have no more enthusiasm, it's time for me to say goodbye. Exactly. And saying say goodbye by the way. Thanks so much. This Thank has been very entertaining, much. Inter been informative great. to me. Great. great to meet you in person. You too. Super. And again, thank you, Sarah World, for putting this whole project together.